Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar with me, Fawad Razak Zara, market analyst with Think Markets. Also in the room is my colleague. Hello, Victor. How are you doing? Uh, hello, I'm doing great. Uh, and looking forward to a, another vibrant discussion about uh, what seems to be um, a much more interesting market um, over the past few months. Indeed, uh, we've seen uh, bond yields uh, spiking, and this has led to a sell-off in the technology sector. Uh, crude oil prices have been rallying rapidly with Brent climbing above $80 a barrel, uh, which is uh, significant, really, come to think about it, uh, given how uh, strong prices have risen. Um, we will, we'll, we'll talk about crude oil and the stock markets and, and yields and discuss things in greater detail. But for those of you who have joined us live, Thank you so much. Um, please make sure you ask us questions during this webinar. For those of you who are watching a recording of this, uh, please consider joining us live next time so that you can ask us questions and we'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have during this webinar. Now, um, the risk warning uh, in front of you, please read this uh, carefully and then we will share the charts after this is out of the way. So um, these webinars for, are for general information only and are not intended to provide trading or investment advice or personal recommendations. Any information relating to past performance of an investment does not necessarily guarantee future performance. Think markets shall not be responsible for any loss that you incur, either directly or indirectly, arising from any investment based on any information in this webinar. Please remember that a spread betting and trading CFDs carry significant risks and may not be suitable for all investors. All right. Um, I think um, the best place we can start uh, would be to go straight to the equity markets and uh, share the chart of NASDAQ, maybe, because this is a technology heavy index. And uh, we can discuss over this chart um, in terms of what's been happening uh, to give you an idea you know, about what's driving the markets at the moment. So as you can see, uh, the technology heavy index has dropped uh, in recent weeks and um, it is pointing to another weaker open today. This is the CFDs obviously down 1.36% um, at the moment. It's off its earlier lows, but only a little bit. Um, similarly, the technology heavy DAX, German DAX index is down. Um, it's down by 1.24% uh, as we speak. Um, other European indices and US futures are also lower. The French CAC is uh, leading the way. Uh, but you can see that the, um, the uh, Russell futures are only down by 0.3%. The Dow is only uh, down by 0.37%, reflecting um, the, these indices um, lack of technology companies in them. So why are technology stocks falling is the key question. Well, it's, it's all to do with, uh, with bond yields. And if I share with you the chart of um, US 10 year bond yields here, you can see that in, in, in recent days, we've broken out to the upside with um, the 10 year uh, hitting 1.5% uh, yesterday. And it is holding steady uh, so far in today's session. And um, similar picture really uh, across the board in, um, in Germany, the bond yields have also risen, albeit um, they still remain miles below where the US yields are. Uh, in fact, the German yields are still below one, uh, zero uh, level. Uh, so it has some way to go, but the fact that they are rising um, is something to, um, to notice. Um, and, to be uh, honest, like uh, considering uh, yeah. the levels of in inflation seen across uh, across the globe, um, yeah. I'm still surprised that the yields are this low. This low, indeed. Uh, uh, this is a very interesting point you've made. Um, you know, the, the US 10 year um, is at its highest level since June. Um, it's not even uh, reached its peak uh, that was hit in uh, March of this year uh, yeah. at around 175, 180. <clears throat> Um, so it, it looks like um, it has some way to go, given that since March, 
we have seen an explosion in terms of uh, energy prices and other inflationary pressures coming in um, to yeah. the, uh, hitting the global economy. So um, if, if, an, if recent inflation pointers are anything to go by, then you'd expect um, the US 10 year to break um, the uh, this year's earlier high and go some distance above it especially as um, the Fed has also now become uh, a lot more hawkish um, uh, in, in terms of uh, signaling that uh, it wants to taper its QE program before the end of the year. Um, so yeah. all of that considered, um, I, I reckon, or we reckon, both myself and Victor reckon that yields are going to rise further, and this is going to be bad news for technology stocks. So why is it bad news for technology stocks? Uh, I'm going to put you on spot there, uh, Victor, if you can shed some light onto that. Yeah, well, um, generally, uh, te te technology stocks are more growth oriented. So um, uh, obviously, the, the higher the yields go, um, we, we assume that uh, the economy is going to cool down and uh, growth stocks, which are very sensitive, are, are, are reacting poorly. And, you know, there is another bit that I want to add here, uh, aside purely from a yield perspective, uh, the, 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 the general inflationary environment in which we're in, uh, actually, I don't think is very good for technology companies overall um, because anyone can shed a, uh, I mean, stop a subscription to Netflix or yeah. whatever other subscription they have. <laughs> um, try to minimize uh, 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 costs. Uh, like the, the, these these uh, items are going to be the first ones that uh, fall under the knife, so to say. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that uh, people will start uh, will stop consuming uh, oil. Yeah. Like, I don't don't think they're going to stop driving or. Uh, yeah, oil oil demand demand is uh, price inelastic, uh, meaning that. Uh, yeah. Um, if prices rise, demand is still going to be there. It's not going to fall significantly compared to something that's uh, more uh, considered to be, you know, a luxury item like iPhone, yeah. for example, or whatever. Yeah, um, and uh, the iPhones, like, yeah. Speaking of of this, like, why why would you need another new iPhone? Like, <laughs> isn't the one that you have from three years ago pretty good? Um, yeah, yeah. Like, there is a. Uh, there, there is definitely we we're, we're, we might be hitting a point at which uh, it no longer makes sense to upgrade this frequently, yeah, as we used to years ago. Indeed, um, another thing with the um, technology stocks, they are as Victor mentioned, they're growth stocks, and growth stocks they have low dividend yields, right? So, uh, from a yield-seeking investor's point of view. Will it does it make sense to continue buying overvalued uh, technology companies at these elevated levels, nope. um, or just invest <laughs> in the um, government bonds and uh, earn a fixed interest uh, payment? Yeah. payment. So, so there's that as well. People are, uh, you know, yield seeking investors don't find um, the um, technology companies to be more um, to be um, attractive from a valuation point of view. So. Um, as yields continue to rise, we should see um, technology heavy indices uh, come down. And S and P uh, obviously has lots of technology stocks in it. Uh, but the Russell, uh, the sorry, the Nasdaq 100, as we shared before, um, is the one that will be in focus. And you know, this Nasdaq index has broken its uh, bullish trend line, um, as we previously pointed out. Uh, it did sell off uh, last last Monday, I think it was, and then it recovered retested the broken trend from underneath and it has held as resistance uh, with the um, prior support and resistance zone, these uh, red lines providing resistance this time leading to another drop. So uh, going forward, I think uh, it makes perfect sense to continue to look for short setups until, um, until obviously uh, yields stop rising um, or um, yields reverse. And um, so 
the areas of resistance I would be looking for next is, is this zone here. Let me just put a box around it. Um, the reason being um, is that this area has offered a bit of support yesterday and uh, previously um, before we saw the breakdown um, overnight. So if uh, we see uh, a recovery attempt back into the zone, um, such as like this, and then I would expect the market to resume lower from there and take out liquidity, meaning stop loss orders from people who went long here or here. Uh, there will be lots of stops resting below this level and below this level, right? So I would expect the market to go down to those levels uh, in the days ahead, possibly later on today. We may see a, a, a big sell-off if uh, investors, uh, in, investor worries uh, rise uh, sharply about inflation and uh, tapering and so on. Um, so that's my outlook on the NASDAQ and so far as the short term is concerned. In the long term, I'm not sure how far we will see because we'll see the markets fall because uh, if you think about um, inflationary pressures um, rising, I mean, look at the commodity price, crude oil as uh, this is WTI. Um, it has almost reached uh, its prior high that was hit in July. Um, if you look at natural gas prices breaking out um, to new new highs, um, Brent oil is uh, at uh, above 80. Um, all of this adding uh, to inflationary pressures, but it's also hurting the consumer, right? So um, if uh, disposable income uh, f from consumers fall as a result of um, spiking energy prices, and then growth uh, may not be as strong as um, as uh, well would have been the case um, previously, which means therefore that uh, central banks might think that um, you know you know they, they've consistently said that inflation is going to be transi uh, transitory, but if uh, growth is not going to be strong, then um, that will support that view, and as soon as um, Inflation, inflation weakens, then um, you can expect the central banks to kind of um, not uh, reduce the stimulus as fast as they would have done if inflation had remained high. So there's a case that you can make that uh, maybe the Fed and other central banks are not going to um, reduce uh, their asset purchases um, significantly because of um, the fact that growth is going to uh, weaken as a result of um, spiking energy prices and, and so on. Um, yes, that's inflationary right now, but um, you know we could see inflation go back, and that could be a reason why stock markets might not fall as much as we think they might. But right now, the trend is clearly bearish for the major indices, um, and uh, we would favor looking for short setups on the. Um, on the technology heavy indices like the DAX um, uh, and the uh, NASDAQ. Now the DAX is also um, it's also looking bearish, isn't it, Victor? It's kind of made a high yeah, here it, and it's broken it, the trend line. Uh, rebounded from uh, from this double bottom that was formed around 1550, yeah. and uh, we were seeing this uh, rebound fading, and there is a uh, good reason to to, to um, expect uh, another visit to that uh, uh, level around 15,000 and uh, really um, yeah the 200 day moving average mm. which is quite something like Indeed, if we break um, below that there is an um, interim level of support uh, right here that's being tested at the uh, 15,000, call that 15,400 or thereabouts. Yeah. Um, which was the, uh, it was uh, kind of interim resistance uh, when the market tried to stage a recovery. Um, and then we broke above it. And now it's being retested from uh, above. So we may see some hesitation here as we are at the moment. So, um, um, maybe we can copy this to our intraday charts and see if uh, we can define this level more precisely. Um, perhaps this level here um, or around this area. Um, so we may see a bounce from here. 
but given the um, given the uh, the daily chart looking um, bearish making lower lows and lower highs um, if we do see a bounce from here um, I would consider that as a, as a short covering bounce rather than um, rather than anything else and tell the chart still as otherwise so this is the hourly chart we're looking at the, um, the shaded area is um, was previously resistance um, and it may offer some support as I mentioned but if you break below that then the next level of potential support in the short term it could be this level right here where we have the 61.8 percent Fibonacci retrace also converging um, and then below that uh, I don't see any um, other major levels until that double bottom low that we saw on the daily in terms of resistance this level is now going to be key so let me just color that in red um, this level was uh, previously support and so if we get a retest of this level we may see some uh, weakness coming uh, around that level and that level ties in with this right here on the daily which was um sorry which is um the base of support from friday's price action yeah yeah which has now been broken so so uh, um um, moving on to, to other asset classes, uh, this time around, due to the rise uh, in uh, uh, yields, uh, yeah. gold isn't proving uh, to be a safe haven uh, uh, when compared to yeah. the, the stock market. Like we have seen this pattern over and over again where uh, gold uh, was uh, getting bid the moment the stock market starts dropping. Yeah. And this time we're not seeing it. What's going on there? Yeah. So, I think um, the the dollar uh, gold is um, in in recent years actually gold has not uh, had too much of a positive correlation with the S and P five hundred. In other words, gold and the S and P five hundred have moved in the same direction more or less. Yeah. And it's all because of well. Um, it's all because of the of actions of cent exactly uh, and actions yeah. of central bank more generally because during the pandemic if you remember um which is here uh, when when everything sold off then we saw a big recovery in the stock market and gold also rose uh, with the s p 500 as uh, the fed increased its balance sheet by um, ramping up QE purchases and other central banks followed suit um, so all of that cheap central bank money that came into the markets found some um, found its way into stocks and other and assets including gold uh, and silver um, but now uh, you know it, since since speaking um, at a new record high gold has been declining um, for about a year now just over a year now uh, making lower lows and lower highs so the same reason that we're seeing technology stocks a struggle which is rising yields uh, gold is also struggling for that for that same reason now why is uh, rising yields bad for gold well if you think of gold as an asset that pays no interest or dividend unlike e equities and furthermore it costs money to store um, investors are better off they would feel by holding on uh, to bonds right because they, they can expect to get some coupon payment from that um, even if it's very low um, but at least it's not going to cost them any money uh, unlike uh, gold, which uh, not only it's it's pointing lower at the moment, uh, but also it doesn't pay interest. So um, that's that's the reason why we're seeing gold prices struggle. And you have Added, to pay for storage. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, storage cost. So um, for that reason, gold is struggling. Um, but it, you also have the dollar. Um, you know, if you look at the dollar index, um, dollar index is trying to break out and it's, this is looking quite bullish isn't it um, this is because the fed is comparatively more hawkish than um, many other central banks and not least the bank of japan or the swiss national bank um, whereas the fed is expected to um, taper its uh, bond purchases in the coming months and potentially raise interest rates next year uh, whereas other major central banks are not in that position just yet um, so 
this is putting upward pressure on, on the dollar. And when the dollar is rising, then everything priced in the dollar tends to fall, with the exception of a few things like crude oil at the moment. But uh, generally, rising dollar is, uh, or appreciating dollar is not good for dollar assets. Um, but I can see a question related to this from uh, one of our participants in this uh, webinar. Um, if the stocks are risky at the moment and investors are selling them, then why investors are not buying safe haven assets like uh, J J the Japanese yen, Swiss franc and gold? Um, well, there, there, there are two reasons. Um, and I'll let Victor as well to, to have uh, an input in, in this. The first uh, reason I can think of is it's not really risk off um, across the stock markets. So let me go back to the indices. Yeah, we, we talked about uh, um, technology companies coming down or technology stock uh, stocks uh, getting uh, a hammering at the moment. Um, they are only off uh, only slightly from their previous record highs. So that's one point. Another, um, if you look at um, uh, the likes of the Russell, you know, Russell um, rallied yesterday. Yeah. Um, and it's now testing this potential support level. So um, this, um, so stocks that are sensitive to economic growth, they tend to do well when, um, when yields rise. Um, uh, you know, rising yields are good for banks because banks uh, make their money when uh, interest rates rise um, as they can charge more interest, right? So um, bank stocks uh, should be going up and I can look at a few banks, uh, maybe um, uh, Citigroup, there you go, Citigroup uh, rose yesterday. Um, I'm sure uh, if you look at all the other banks, you will see similar price action Goldman Sachs rose yesterday. Um, but if, if you compare that with uh, a technology company like Apple, it fell yesterday. Uh, so this is yesterday's price action because the markets haven't opened today. Um, Amazon, interestingly, um, closed this gap yesterday. But uh, anyway, that's not the point. The point I'm making is it's not totally risk off right now. Okay. Yeah, we're still not seeing a day where yeah. stocks drop like three, four, five percent, yeah. something uh in the vicinity of november last year like october yeah. november last year when we had this uh, uh crazy falls just before the vaccine news yeah and um this is something to look out for you know? like yeah. the, Jap the japanese yen is it such a good heaven nowadays not, not really, really because no. uh like uh, the 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 changes in the currency market over recent years like the the, the ability of the japanese yen to um, maintain its status as a safe haven uh, is declining because yeah. well interest rates are at all-time lows everywhere yeah. so you're not you don't really have the um uh, the outflows from uh, foreign stocks. Uh, well, that's what you need, actually. You need to, the outflows from Japanese investors holding foreign stocks yeah. and repatriating uh, flows back home. This yeah. isn't happening yet. Japanese investors are not, like they are holding a lot of uh, US equities, uh, but they're not panicking at this point in time. Yeah. And, this is the Nikkei, uh, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and this is uh, something to, to that has changed over recent uh, years. Yeah. And we don't have these uh, extreme moves in the stock market to justify a rally in the Japanese yen. Yeah. I do expect that it will happen yeah. should the stock market uh, sell off sharply. Yeah. So, so to, Not at to... this measured pace that we have yeah. right now. Yeah. So just to add to that, um, uh, what Victor said, if you are expecting equity markets as a whole to fall because of some other reason, maybe because of concerns about uh, peak economic growth, uh, valuation concerns, etc., or some other uh, stimulus like um, Evergrande, uh, contagion risks, etc., then um, that's when we may see, uh, you know, risk off being reflected in other assets like uh, the Japanese yen. Swiss franc, etc. So, the best thing to do, uh, uh, you know, from a 
trader's point of view is, is not to not to go against the, the trend, wait for the market to give you the right signals and concentrate on the markets that make sense, right? So right now, going long the dollar makes sense because the yield differential in the US, let me just show you what I mean uh, by yield differ differential. Um, this is this, this chart right here. This is the uh, yield spread between the 10 year bond um, bonds in the US compared to Japan. Okay, so as you can see, it's, ba it's basically the US 10 year minus the Japanese 10 year. And you can see that it has broken out in the favor of the US, right? So the spread is rising, meaning that um, yield seeking uh, investors are finding a better value moving their cash in US banks from Japanese to earn a higher uh, rate of interest. Um, which is why we're seeing the Japanese uh, yen fall against the US dollar, or put another way, which yeah, is why so we see Yeah, so what's happening that, yeah. um, 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 right now is that um, the perhaps the yields that are uh, relatively high in the US don't really push investors to divest all the way yeah. uh, from, from US assets. So another, maybe and, they'll sell some stuff stocks but they'll yeah. buy some bonds uh, another reason is, is because of inflation remember the bank of japan likes inflation because there's inflation has been non-existent in japan for decades yeah um similarly in Swiss, uh, in switzerland inflation is very low um compared to the rest of the world so when, when inflation rises as they are right now globally uh, the Bank of Japan and Swiss National Bank are probably going to be the last major banks to to react if they do at all to to rising inflationary pressures. Whereas the the Fed, uh, the Bank of England, the uh, European Central Bank, these banks will have to uh, have indicated that they will react if if inflation gets out of hand. So we're seeing that's why we're seeing the the likes of the dollar yen, uh, pound yen, etc., go up. Um, and we're not seeing much haven flows into the Japanese yet. Uh, but yeah, that, you know, it could change. It could all change if, 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 if investors as a whole think that, um, um, that uh, if, if they decide that it's, it's time to um, start selling equity prices, e equities um, across the board. Uh, but right now we're not seeing that as I showed you with the Russell chart, for example. Uh, indeed, if you look at a, a few uh, European indices as well, like I don't know, like the IBEX, uh, the IBEX, the Spanish IBEX. You know, there, there are lots of banks in this uh, index, and um, as well as bank, you got travel stocks, etc. Um, so the IBEX has actually, um, you could make an argument that the, the IBEX has broken this bullish trend line. Yes, it hasn't held there, um, but nevertheless, um, it's 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 doing better than. Uh, the German DAX is uh, over the last three or four days. So it's not totally risk off right now. Um, that could change is the key message we're trying to put uh, across in this webinar. If I would have to, to, to make a guess, it's yeah. not risk off yet. Yet, that's the key word, yeah. Um, I, I, I think, I think um, with, with the Fed tapering or indicating that they will start tapering, um, I think the the risks are certainly skewed to the to the downside from here. Uh, so we may well see um, haven assets uh, find support um, in the coming months. But um, and so far as gold is concerned, um, going back to it, right now it's making lower lows and lower highs. Um, so the path of least resistance is to the downside, uh, which means therefore that you, you know unless you're a long term investor, um, as a trader you you know you have to be very careful because. Uh, you know, especially when leverage is involved, um, that things could go against you um, and um, make it very uncomfortable, to say the least. Um, so um, wait for the right trigger. Right now, we're not seeing any uh, bullish characteristics in this. Um, so the wait continues. Um, the, the last high in gold uh, from a purely technical point of view now was this level right here. Um, so I would wait for gold to break that level at 1787 before turning uh, bullish on gold. Even this level right here, you know, if you're, if you're more, um, 
um, if you are an aggressive uh, short term trader, um, this was yesterday's high at 1760. That level, um, you know, I can put a alert on short term bullish. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll well, get an alert I'm, at this, I'm this gonna, uh, make my usual shout out here and say that yeah. we're likely to see 1660 before 1760. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, that looks quite quite likely given the rising yields and um, rising dollar. And um, also, imagine um, that uh, a lot of retail minded people, uh, traders will have seen uh, these lows double bottom here. Um, another low here, calling this what, uh, a triple bottom. Support must be really strong here. They, they would be thinking, yeah, yeah, support was strong at one point. Is it still going to be strong? Um, that's the key uh, question. And judging by the behavior of price action across the financial markets, I, I we don't think this level is going to be very um, strong anymore. Um, if anything, it might, you know, the risking orders from people who are long gold might attract prices towards these levels. So we may yeah. see a run um, on these stop orders that are undoubtedly uh, resting below these lows uh, in the days ahead, possibly later on today because of the, the way gold is falling right now. Um, so don't so, be surprised if we see a spike lower. But um, yeah, for whatever reason, if you're bullish on gold, just wait for that trigger, okay? Yeah. Uh... Shall we move on to, to the currency market? Uh, something's going on with the pound today. What, what's up? Do you, do you have any um, as to well, why particularly the, the pound? Yeah. So the pound is uh, looking quite weak today, obviously against the dollar. This could be a dollar story, obviously, because the dollar's rising across the board. But if you look at the other pound crosses, uh, for example, the euro yeah. pound, it, it's also risen. Um, the pound yen uh, has fallen. So even you know the yen is, is the weakest currency. Um, it has been the weakest currency in the last few days, but the pound well, today is the even pound weaker. Is the, yeah. Well, the today is weak, weakest. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, what's up? Like so, uh, the, the the Bank of England uh, yeah. said that they're going to raise rates. What's going <laughs> on? Exactly. So previously, the indications from the Bank of England the officials were that um, we are going to see an interest rate uh, rise and uh, probably early next year. Uh, what's happened? Uh, Today, or I think um, overnight, uh, we, we saw a comment from the Bank of England governor, uh, Bailey, who said that um, the supply bottlenecks um, that are um, creating inflationary pressures right now in the economy, um, they pose risk to economic growth uh, and that things could fall apart um or he implied uh, something in those lines meaning that uh the bank of england governor expects uh economic growth to slow down sharply in the coming months because of the um supply bottlenecks and uh um, other factors uh which could be interpreted as uh, an indication that perhaps a rate hike might not be so imminent as had been previously the case so if the Bank of England is uh, having second thoughts about uh, tightening its belt in, in so far as monetary policy is concerned, then investors are um, kind of uh, pricing out those uh, in, um, rate hike expectations from the pound uh, and they are uh, selling the currency left, right and center today. So it makes it makes uh, quite. Uh, it makes sense to uh, for it to be reacting the way it has given those comments from the Bank of England governor. That's why. Is what there I any heard. hope at this point in time for pound boosts? Uh, what are the levels that you would be yeah. looking at? So, um, as soon as the pound started to um, go below last year's high, this is last year's high against the dollar, right? So, when the pound uh, had a strong rally like this last year um, what we wanted to see is a continuation to the upside so each time it came down to this level previously uh, we were expecting a, a re recovery from there and, and lo and behold it did go on and rise further but then it started to break down here it, it was the first big clue that it starts uh, it doesn't want to stay above that level and then it, it started to recover again but failed to hold above this level 
created another low below the 2020 uh, high and now is coming down again and it's trying to break down decisively. So right now, uh, I would say that um, the, the risks are that we may see um, further weakness in the short term outlook. And um, where uh, I see some level of support coming in uh, would be around uh, 135, um, which is another 100 pips below where we are right now. Um, so the area around 135 is um, marks two really important levels. Um, first, um, law, uh, to the 2019 high, which was this level right here, comes in just ahead of that at 135.15. And then this year's earlier low comes in at 134.45. So, so this area here is going to be really important as far as the pound is concerned. Do you see any levels um, that uh, might be of interest to you, Victor? Sure. So um, uh, I, I, I wouldn't uh, say anything uh, much different. The downside looks open at this point in time if we close, especially if we close below 136 today. I don't expect yeah. the 135.72 to be much of a, a support considering the current, the current setup that we're in. Yeah. And... I'll be looking at uh, 135 and 134 uh, yeah. to, 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 to basically play some more significant role. Um, I would say that uh, if you are on the short side on this trade, uh, 135 and 134 should be your targets initially. Sure. Maybe we can um, do this ABCD uh, projection as well. Um, come to that at around 132. Um, you know, A, B, the move from point A to point B here um, equals to the projected move from point uh, C to point, potentially point D right here. So there's a projected A, B, C, D move down to 132, uh, 133. Um, that could be an, uh, an additional target. You could also use more um, uh, your Fibonacci extension levels. Um, so for example, draw your Fibs from this low to this high, you can see the 161.8 comes in uh, at around point, point D of this ABCD move um, at just uh, above 133 handle. Um, the 127.2 Feb retrace comes in at the 130, around 135 area. So those are the, the key uh, downside levels for me in so far as the short term is concerned. Let's see if, uh, you know, we, we there's lots of uh, central bank uh, speeches uh, scheduled for this week. Um, if you look at this economic calendar, uh, we have uh, today's what Tuesday. We have um, Fed chair testifying. We have a couple of uh, FOMC members speaking, and uh, Governor of the Bank of England will be speaking again on Wednesday. Uh, as well, the Bank of Japan governor uh, and Fed chair as well. So lots of um, central bank speeches to look forward to this week. And we may hear different thoughts from the Bank of England governor um, later on in the week that could reverse the weakness in the pound uh, from a more macro point of view. But right now, it looks bearish. All right. So... Uh, um... Maybe it's time to, to ask our audience whether they have yeah. any specific questions about any specific assets. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, let's have a look at the uh, crypto space. Crypto space. Um, so uh, with the energy prices rising, um, consumers' disposable incomes are falling accordingly. And... I know. What would um, Bitcoin uh -huh. can be thought of as a uh, of uh, something that you know most people would um, consider luxury investment. If they have a spare, some spare change, they would probably invest in crypto. Um, um, and if they need to spend um, to pay their bills because they can't afford it, then um, some investors might have to sell uh, some of their assets, including crypto, to 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 pay off some some of their bills. So, uh, from that point of view, uh, cryptos are um, going to struggle, I think, in the short term. 
Um, and let's not forget also uh, China's ongoing crackdown. A few days ago, they banned all transactions in China, um, uh, all crypto transactions, I should say. China is uh, the world's second largest economy and the most populous um, country in the world. Um, I think it accounts to about 14% uh, or 17% of the world population. Um, Chinese population. Uh, there you go. Some uh, 1.4 billion people live there, which is which is, I think, uh, nearly, nearly like 17-18% uh, of the world um, as percentage. Let's just write that as percentage of the world. I have... 18%. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I have another thing to, 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 to stress here um, yeah. that is totally unrelated to anything we have discussed so far. Go on then. So the recent, uh, the recent rise in energy prices uh, which is pretty substantial all over the world. Yeah. Couldn't that result in a crackdown on uh, cryptocurrency mining? Because yeah. arguably, a cryptocurrency mining is not uh, something that the whole ben uh, society is benefiting from yeah. at this point in time. Uh, and you're seeing energy prices in Europe Natural going gas. through yeah. the roof. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this this is something that I think is totally going to reshuffle the crypto mining space. And the lower, like the, the more countries realize that uh, they have some spare, uh, so they can uh, um, open some spare capacity for the electricity grid mm. if they limit uh, cryptocurrency mi mining. The, the the less uh, the, the 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 more the difficulty is going to um, decline uh, for for all the cryptos and hence I think that their value should decline as well because if it's not that difficult to mine it yeah it shouldn't be that expensive exactly so 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 that's another very important point that you've made there uh, which is um going to be an issue facing cryptos i think even in the current climate if, if you think about uh, mining uh, it's going to impact mining the current mining um of bitcoin and other cryptos um the, the high energy prices um so that in itself is uh kind of yeah and uh, considering the fact that uh, um, so many countries have gone uh, to to uh, out of their way to uh make their uh, energy grids, uh, grids more green. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If if this crypto mining uh, thing continues, like all these efforts are basically yeah. put to waste. Exactly. So um, that's that's a major risk facing cryptocurrencies at the moment. Um, so I, I I reckon that uh, in the short term, at least. Um, the, the portal reach resistance for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies um, remain to the downside. So I reckon 40,000 will be, um, will be uh, the target for the Bitcoin bears uh, in the short term, possibly lower than that. As I reckon as we're going to yeah. see 30,000 within two weeks. 30,000 within two weeks. That's a big, bold call. And usually Victor has been <laughs> quite right with his uh, big, bold calls. And uh, so... I wouldn't bet against Victor. <laughs> yeah, but that you know the, the current um, trend is, is is bearish, isn't it? We are below the 200-day moving average. The 21-day exponential yeah. is pointing lower. Prices are making lower lows and lower highs. Um, right now, technically focused traders or investors will not have many reasons to buy Bitcoin because of the fact prices are heading lower um, or, or look like they're heading lower. So yeah, the the current uh, 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 technical yeah. and fundamental backdrop sure. just doesn't look very good. A, a lot of um, investors in the crypto world are technically focused uh, or technically minded people, um, and so uh, and there's lots of speculation uh, in this market and I would say any other market because um, of the fact that the fundamentals are so uh, difficult to to gauge. Um, 
so uh, people like to buy things that are rising, uh, buying the dips in a rising market is is a fa- one of the favorite uh, ways of us, you know, going long on anything. Um, right now, it's not a rising market. Um, so instead of dips being bought, people are, um, or traders would be more inclined to sell their rallies into resistance. And um, judging by recent price action, that's that's the way it's been uh, for for Bitcoin and other cryptos. So in the short term, um, the, the path of least resistance t- certainly looks bearish uh, to the downside. Um, you know, if you, if you're bullish on any uh, cryptos, just be patient. <laughs> you know, the markets will bottom out, but um, don't preempt it. Just wait for that right signal to emerge. I can't see any questions um, from our attendees in this webinar. And uh, we have gone a little bit over time. So I think it's uh, appropriate to end the webinar here. Uh, And let me thank you for those of you who joined us live and for your lovely questions. Uh, I hope uh, we have been able to shed some light into what's going on in the financial markets and given you some uh, ideas about how to go about the business, um, uh, at least in the short term outlook. Uh, We will have uh, the same webinar happening next Tuesday at the same time. So please make sure to join us for that one. Also next week, we have the uh, Not From Payrolls preview webinar um, on Friday, which uh, is, as the name suggests, a preview of the US jobs report happening at 11.30 London time. Please make sure to join us for that one as well. See you in those webinars. See you soon. Good luck.